Hey, everybody. Welcome into Faith and Football. My name is Neil. Guys, we had a wild one last night with the Ravens and the Bucks. Massive points scored, but also a massive loss for the Bucks. So we're going to get into that a little later in the, in the uh, episode. You guys know that this episode is the injury episode. And look, there are sayings throughout sports. There are sayings, uh, you know, throughout the NFL, you know, little cliches, you know, things like that that people say. One of the things in fantasy football that I've started saying here as of late, just because I've been pulling so many trades this year, is if you ain't trading, you ain't trying. So I want to bring that energy and that mentality to this channel for this episode. And I want to remind you that if, look guys, you know that this channel is called Faith and Football. So we always put God first, as you should in all aspects of your life. So if you aren't, I, I encourage you reevaluate and, and reposition some things so that God can bless you, so that God can show you the plan that he has for your life. And the thing I want you to go into this week with is if you ain't saying, you ain't sowing. See, if we're not saying the word of God, if we're not conveying the message that he has given us, if we're not sowing, if we're not saying that, then we're not sowing the seeds that he wants us to sow. Now, one of the other things in fantasy football that I said is that the best ability is availability. And that is no more true this season than it has ever been because we've had so many injuries that the guys who have the best ability are the guys who are actually available for you to play. I mean, it's great to have CMC, but what good has he done you this season? He's been on the bench since week one. He hasn't played a lick of football, so he has got you zero points. It's great to have the potential, but what are you doing with that potential? Are you pulling it off the bench and actually using it for the purpose that God intended for you to use? And one example, look, there are, there are so many examples of people being available and not necessarily being qualified to do the things that they did throughout the Bible. You know, I, I look back and I was I was trying to pick one to talk about. And, you know, I looked at Moses and, you know, he was available and he tried to come up with so many reasons why he wasn't qualified. But God gave him the tools and gave him the ability to be available for his purpose. And he grew into it. You know, he didn't want to go lead the children out of Israel. He didn't want to go talk to Pharaoh. He was slow of speech. The, the, the man had a speech impediment. I mean, can you imagine going up to the president of the United States? Well, let, let me put it to you like this. Imagine going up to Donald Trump and being like, bidi, 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 bidi. like you would be embarrassed to speak to someone of that caliber for in that way. So Moses didn't want to go before the most powerful man in the world at the time and tell him that he was going to take his entire workforce away from him. So he kept coming up with excuses. He didn't want to be available, but God used him anyway. He made himself available. God gave him the tools to eliminate all of those excuses that he was coming up with. You know, and then I look at, you know, Daniel. Daniel made himself available. And sometimes when we make ourselves available, we have to feel uncomfortable. See, Moses wasn't comfortable going before Pharaoh. I seriously doubt that Daniel was like all that comfortable going into the lion's den, but he had faith. He made he made himself comfortable in uncomfortability. Or I'm sorry, God made him comfortable in uncomfortability. So sometimes when we are uncomfortable, that is the beginning of that is the beginning of obedience. 
and sorry, the and the batteries are unloaded and charge the uh, computer last night. But anyway, um, like I said, when you start feeling uncomfortable, that's a sign that maybe you're heading the right way because there are things that God's going to call you to do that don't feel natural, that don't feel like you can do them because you can't. You need him. You need his guidance in order to do that. So what I came up with was the story of David. And see, David was a shepherd boy. He was out in the pasture when tending his father's flock when the prophet Samuel came to anoint him. And we go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12. And Samuel's run through all his brothers. Jesse had seven sons. They all came before him, before Samuel, and God was like, nope, not him, nope, not him, no, nope, not him, and throughout the line. And then the one that wasn't there, the one that wasn't available at the time, made himself available. He came, left the flock, came to his father's house to present himself before Samuel, and this is what was said. So he sent for him. And had him brought in, he was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. See, God will anoint you. God will show you that you are the one. All you have to do is make yourself available to God's purpose. So how do we do that? Well, we have to have a relationship with God in the first place. If you don't have a relationship with God, how are you ever going to know your purpose? How are you ever going to hear him? So I encourage you today, um, maybe you're listening and you're not a believer. Maybe you're listening and you, you don't have a church home. I encourage you, find a good gospel preaching church home to get involved in. Guys, if you don't have one, Look, hit me up. I'll be more than happy to recommend uh, some here in the Lafayette area uh, that I know of that are good gospel preaching churches that have a real community connection and can help guide you on your walk with God. So those that's my uh, my faith for this morning. Um, and I'm doing kind of an earlier episode today. I'm kind of proud of myself for that. Um, but I wanted to get this out to you guys because, um, you know, the, the injury list is long and, uh, it's intense. So, uh, kind of like, you know, our calling on our life, uh, it is long and it is intense guys. Look, the Bible tells us that our life is, but a vapor is, is here today and gone tomorrow. Um, you know, it's, it's like that in the grand scheme of things, we don't have that much time to waste. So I encourage you today that if you're watching this, that you make yourself available and uncomfortable and in the presence of God. So guys, please uh, down below, subscribe, like, sh and share, and hit me up with a comment. Uh, let me know where you're listening from. And how I can help connect you better with the one and only Savior of the world. Guys, I'd love to help you out in this area. So hit me up. Now, you guys know what time it is. It's time to talk about Zia Rotisserie Grill. Guys, there's great things happening at Zia. They have a new appetizer that you can get for free. Yes, free. For your table down below, click subscribe, like, and share. Show them that you are subscribed to this channel and you can get the Kung Pao cauliflower. It is delicious for your table. Try it out on me uh, before this offer ends. Please go check them out. They are at 235 Ducey Road in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, guys, if you need some catering done, Call them up, 337-406-0013. Uh, but look, go down there for lunch, dinner, bring the family, bring friends, bring coworkers. You guys, whip out your phone and show them that you're subscribed to this channel. 
if you don't want the kung pao cauliflower, fine. Get a hummus. Get some ribs. Look, you want to, you got like four people eating with you. That's great. Guess what? Get the four bone, get the six bone. One couple of y'all fight over who gets the extra two. Um, but give them a whirl if you want to get them for your your entree. But try them before you buy them. Okay. You can't get better than that. Free food from me to you from Zia. Guys, down below, click uh, subscribe, like, and share. Smash the notification button so you guys know when I put out new content. Uh, but yeah, go down there, check them out. 235 Duce Road, Lafayette, Louisiana. And guys, don't forget about my sweetest uh, sponsor that I have, Keller's Bakery at 627 Lafayette Street in Youngsville, Louisiana. Look, guys, it's even a better deal than Zia. I know Zia is absolute smashing it with this offer of a free appetizer, but... You don't even have to buy anything down at Keller's. You can just go down there, take a look around, pick you up two free cookies when you show them that you subscribe to Faith and Football and see my buddy Dusty Shores down there at Keller's Bakery in Youngsville, 627 Lafayette Street, Tuesday through Saturday, open 6 to 3. So go down there and check them out and tell them Neil says hi. So, guys, look. This was a crazy weekend of football. We had so many injuries. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into them now. Next episode, remember, next episode is the start sit episode. I'll go into a little bit more of uh, injury recap as well. I kind of gloss over it, and we might get some some more updates on some key players uh, if we do. Be sure it will be here. Make sure you're subscribed, you're liking, you're sharing, you're smashing the notification button, all those good things to let to help you out. Let me help you out on your fantasy team. Look, I know some of you have had a really rough season. Look, Nico on IR, uh, Rashid Rice out for the season, um, Rahid Shahid out for the season. These guys were key players, and some of them wound up on your squad, and you are decimated with injuries. Make sure you're tuning in to the next episode, and we will talk about start sets. And look, guys, I know your waiver wires are coming up. If you've got waiver wire questions down below, hit me up, and I will help you out uh, make those decisions. But hurry up, because... Tomorrow, that's when waivers run. Waivers are running on Wednesday. It's Waiver Wire Wednesday. And make sure that you're also checking the guys who are being dropped. Look, one man's trash is another man's treasure. As my dad always said, he was a scrapper, uh, as I am. I've uh, I've made quite a few things with things that people have discarded and thought is trash. Uh, so taking after dad in, in that aspect. But um, look. We were trash, and God is making something great of us. So I, I look at it as a, as a divine gift, uh, being able to do that. So let's get into injury updates. Uh, one that hit me a little hard. My boys lost probably rookie of the rookie offensive player of the year. Uh Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is dealing with a rib injury. Um, they're uh, let's see. Uh, X-rays have confirmed they were negative, so it's good news. Um, so Daniels is not dealing with a fractured rib. However, the rib injuries and cartilage injuries are difficult for a thrown athlete. Um, so look. Uh, kind of like Derek Carr is dealing with that oblique injury that makes it difficult for him to throw. This is a rib injury. Now, I will almost guarantee you that Jaden Daniels is probably going to be out at least week eight. And remember, they have a very late bye. It is actually the last week of byes, week 14 by Mageddon. Uh, so by Mageddon is happening week 12 and week 14. Don't forget that six teams Six are on buys both weeks, so week 12 and week 14. Make sure you're looking ahead. Uh, guys, when you're doing trades, 
make sure that you're looking at when that player's uh, bye week is going on because that is kind of a determining factor for me at this point who I go after because players who have already had their bye, you get an extra week of production from that player. So if you're trading away a guy who still has a bye week coming up and you're getting a guy who has a bye week that's already passed, that is a plus for you in that deal. Uh, if you need some more tips or tricks about how to pull off trades down below, hit me up, let me know what you're going after, and I'll be more than happy to help you guys with some trade packages. So Jaden Daniels dealing with a rib injury, this is definitely something to monitor for the rest of the week uh, to see the severity of these this injury. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he misses week, week eight, uh, but he's back for week nine. They'll probably get him uh, a little extra padding, and they'll probably rest him for at least a week. So something to keep an eye on. So, guys, if uh, Marcus Mariota is out there, which he probably is because I seriously doubt he's been rostered, but Marcus Mariota is the backup in Washington. And, yeah, it was against Carolina, who's pretty bad, but he still looked good. I mean, they put up a ton of points against the Panthers, as anyone should, but he still looked he still looked pretty good. So uh, now Aiden O'Connell is dealing with a thumb injury. He is more than likely heading to IR. Uh, so the Raiders quarterback is going to be Gardner Minshew. So Gardner is back. Uh, what does this mean for fantasy? This means that uh, Brock Bowers is going to be probably the lead uh, pass catcher in this uh, this offense, because Jacoby Myers has been dealing with injury as well. Uh, Trey Tucker is probably on your waiver wire. I would strongly suggest that if you've suffered any kind of injury at the wide receiver position, that you go pick this guy up and at least stash him on your, uh, on your roster for future use. So we don't know what's going to pop up for the rest of the week through practice and things. So, Make sure that you're stashing those players who have a high probability of getting a ton of targets. Um, look, the Raiders aren't that good, just plain and simple. I know they want to run the ball, but as bad as they've been, they're really not going to be doing that much. Uh, Deshaun Watson, this was a devastating injury just for the Cleveland Browns, but as far as we are concerned in the fantasy realm, this couldn't come at a better time simply because it. I'm praying that it is Jameis Winston time. Anybody who has uh, David Njoku or Jerry Judy is loving this. Um, not only is Deshaun Watson out for the year, uh, but Dorian Thompson uh, Robinson also left the game in the uh, in the fourth quarter with an injury to his. Middle finger, I'm not going to show that up, put that up, that not on this, this program. Sorry, guys. Um, but his middle finger on his right hand x-rays uh, on that finger were negative, but he's waiting in MRI. It'll probably be today, and we'll get more word of that. Um, Jameis Winston is probably going to be the quarterback under center. Now, I know it's been a few years. But since he did the 33 for 30. But if you remember, we don't care that Jameis Winston is throwing 30 interceptions for a game because the man will throw for five touchdowns too. Okay, he'll throw for three interceptions and four touchdowns, two interceptions and four touchdowns. It doesn't matter. This guy will put his defense in a bad position. But thankfully, the Cleveland defense – is just as, if not better, than the Bucks defense that he was on back in the day. So, thankfully, Jameis has always landed with teams with a really good defense to kind of cover up the fact that he's a little loose with the ball. Now, he will chuck it downfield. So, if you've got Jerry Judy, this is probably a godsend for a lot of people. Now, if you've also got David Njoku, more power to you. You're probably carrying him along with somebody else. Uh, because Njoku has kind of been hit and miss this year. But 
this is probably going to be the time he's hidden. Now, if you're hurting at tight end, um, look, last night, Mark Andrews finally uh, was reminded that he actually plays football with the Ravens. So they had an absolutely outstanding performance last night. Uh, he caught, I believe, four passes for two with uh, two touchdowns. So he had a really good showing last night. But if you're hurting at the tight end position and you want to go after somebody, go after Damon and Joku. You might be able to get him a little bit on the cheap. Maybe you know people aren't really putting two and two together and coming up with four uh, when it comes to Njoku being uh, with a new quarterback. So something to think about. Uh, next up, we got Tyler Huntley. Now this one, this is kind of, it might be a little minor injury just for the simple fact that yes, it's his right shoulder. I believe it's an AC joint sprain or I'm sorry, joint uh, bruise um, or yes, yeah, it is AC joint. Um, based on uh, what we've seen so far, but it's on his right shoulder, which is his throwing shoulder. He is labeled week to week. However, it is rumored that Tua Takavaloa is coming back. So anybody who has anything to do with any offensive weapon on Miami Dolphins is absolutely loving the news that Tua is coming back. Uh, this could mean a regeneration for Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, uh, along with uh, Devon A-Chain and Raheem Mostert. Uh, not to mention the fact that Jonu Smith has definitely gotten in the mix. Uh, he had a really good outing uh, this past week. So keep an eye on him. Maybe he's on your way to wire as well. Another tight end to think about picking up. So this one, this next one, guys, this kind of hurt. This one hurt a lot of people. They've been waiting on this guy to pop off. He's popped off one time this, this year. And that is Brandon Ayuk out for the season uh, with an ACL, MCL uh, injury, tore, tore uh, ACL and his MCL in this past game with uh, with the Niners against KC. Look, not only, you talk about insult to injury, not only – did they lose Brandon Ayuk? They lost the game, and Debo has been hospitalized with pneumonia-like symptoms. So that is something that you guys want to keep an eye on. Uh, look, with Debo coming back, Kittle is actually dealing with a foot sprain as well. But uh, Ayuk is had been there. Debo was uh, in full health. Kittle came back. So the probability that Jawan Jennings has hit your waiver wire is massive. Guys, go check and see if Jawan Jennings, look, we saw him for a couple of games, absolutely go nuclear. So go check it out, see if he is available. If he is, get him. And Ricky Pearsall, a lot of people might have forgotten about this guy. This is the guy who was involved in a, preseason robbery got shot in the chest bullet went through and through no vital organs were affected he's back he's playing so he is definitely a waiver wire target this week especially if you had the foresight to go get him prior to this week kudos to you talking to my boy marshall marshall i told you Hey, I know what I'm talking about. Don't don't let the, the gray hair fool you, okay? I do know what I'm talking about. Um, so I told him to go get Ricky Pearsall. I did tell him to, to drop Joan Jennings, but mm, nobody's perfect, okay? But anyway, Ricky Pearsall is definitely one that had a very high upside this year. Um, a lot of anticipation in this kid. I liked him coming out of college. I like the fact that he landed with the Niners. Yes, he he needed some injuries to happen, but guess what? They happen, and they happen big. Ayuk's done for the year. Debo's feeling down. CMC is still out. So, and uh, while we're on the subject of uh, CMC, uh, it is rumored that he is ramping up football activities and could possibly, not this week, but after the week 10 bye that they have, 
then CMC could return for week 11. I'm sorry, for week 10, because they have a week nine bye. Uh, they will be facing Dallas this coming week. Now, if you have Jordan Mason, guys, I've, I, I, I'm living the Jordan Mason experience as we speak. Uh, I've tried to move him um, recently, uh, but the whispers of CMC coming back has grown to a roar. Um, so CMC manager is not likely to let go of CMC. Um, and here's the thing. In our league, the guy who owns CMC is also the guy who is dead last in our league. So here's the thing. And this is something that people don't really talk about a whole lot. And they don't really share uh, because it's not a strategy that a lot of people hold to. But this is something to think about. If CMC is on the weakest team in your league, you really want to keep them there. Because it's great that CMC is a league winner and he's you know just absolutely phenomenal for fantasy football. But... If it is proven that the guy who has CMC really doesn't have anybody else, do you really want to give him anybody that could, you know, pop off or help him dig his way out of the basement? No, I'm perfectly fine letting the guy who has CMC in our league keep CMC. I don't want to see him anywhere else. Now, that being said, the best way to make sure that he doesn't have anybody to trade for him myself. <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm a little bit too loaded at running back and wide receiver, and I've just built up my depth, so I'm kind of good right now. Uh, but if anything changes, I will definitely let you guys know. But it's something to think about. Let sleeping dogs lie, okay, as my grandma used to say. So this is this next injury is one that kind of hit me personally. Um, DK Metcalf. Uh, had a really good game, but he is going to be doubtful for week eight with a strain, a sprained MCL. He avoided a major injury. So thank you, Lord. I appreciate it greatly. Um, I always, I always give thanks, not only when my players avoid injury, but when my players do well as, as well this week, praise be to the Lord. Um, Everybody on my team, well, almost everybody on my team, I think, popped off um, 175 points, I think, uh, for this week. So, thank you, Lord. I appreciate you watching over my team. So, uh, nothing, look, guys, we get caught up a lot in fantasy football about, you know, oh, I made the right call. Oh, I'm, I got this guy. No, look, God controls all. And if you don't believe that, um, I faced my boy Billy this week, and Billy was talking major smack this week as I, as was I um not going to lie but it did come down to me me talking the last smack when we met face to face my exact words to him were hey you know what i already turned this match over to the lord so it is in his hands that was my last word on the subject when we met face to face on saturday night so that being said, look, guys, I'm I'm doing my best to to practice what I preach and allow God, my faith in the Lord to control my fantasy team. I know it sounds crazy, but I also allow Him to uh, control the fate of my chickens and the selling of the eggs that I sell. So, hey, it works. I'm telling you, it works. Um, you know, I needed a boost. And I, I kind of had to, ch I actually changed my fantasy name as Champ is here. And I was doing really good early in the year. Then I got cute and thought I'd go off on my own, as most of us do, and changed it to Neighbors Hood uh, because I have Malik Neighbors. So I thought it was kind of a cute name. But as soon as I did that, I lost Malik Neighbors to, due to injury, uh, the concussion. And I started losing. So I changed it back. Since I've changed it back, I have not lost. So 
praise be to the Lord. He spoke to me. He's like, hey, you're a champ. That's hey, I'm, that's what he gave me. Okay, so he gave me the championship. He, he labeled me as a champion, and he labels you as a champion as well. So go out and claim that, not just in your fantasy league, but in your life. You are a champion of God, and don't you ever forget it. So um, talking about a team or a, a player on a team that it was former champions many, many years Jalen Polk of the uh, the New England Patriots, uh, he left the game against the Jags in London. Uh, he took a hit to the head, so he is considered week to week. He's going to be going through concussion protocol, so keep an eye on that. Now, um, his teammate, Demario Douglas, we know him also as Pop Douglas, uh, he has an illness. Uh, he tried to play through it, but he was definitely not 100%. Uh, so this is something to keep an eye on. Demario Douglas has actually been a favorite target of new quarterback Drake May. Now, I not only picked up, but I started Drake May because I had Caleb Williams on a bye this past week, and he did absolutely phenomenal. Might have been because he was going up against the Jags, but he still did really good despite uh, them losing so badly to the Jags. Um in London. So uh, two, two uh, injuries on the same team to keep an eye on uh, Jalen Polk and pop Douglas. So keep an eye on that. Um, now another tight end and guys, I, just for you who don't know this coming week is tight end Sunday. So it's tight end week this week in the NFL. Uh, Hunter Henry is probably available on your waiver wire. Now, the Hunter Henry experience, look, guys, I have lived through this before. He pops off. He an absolute weak winner when it comes to tight end, but he's also known to put up a goose on you. So kind of proceed with caution uh, if you're going to start uh, Hunter Henry. There are no teams on a bye this week. This is one of the weeks where there are no teams on by, so you don't have anything to worry about for that. But keep an eye out next week. We'll go over that on the uh, start set episode as well. Pardon me, as well as the week eight injury preview or injury review, like we're doing now with week seven. Uh, guys, <clears throat> what is going on with KC? Why can these guys not keep a wide receiver? Look, Juju Smith Schuster. Out multiple weeks. Um, it's reported that he's experienced hamstring spasms um, in practice on Thursday. Um, so, he, uh, in case, uh, let's see, he was listed in case he, uh, he was listed on the injury report in case he suffered a uh, setback. Um, he did play seven snaps and then was pulled. So, guys, Juju, out. Here's the thing. The deadline for the trades in the NFL is coming up. I don't know when y'all's uh, trade deadline for fantasy is. Ours is week 14. I try as commissioner to make it as close to the playoffs as I possibly can to give the most people the most the best opportunity to shore up their rosters going into the playoffs. Uh, I, I try to limit the uh, the amount of hard decisions because fantasy football is filled with difficult decisions. Um, you know, drop ads, um, start set, all that kind of stuff. So all the waiver wire things, I try to make it as easy as I can. That's why I have the trade deadline right up to week 14. What I don't allow, and this is speaking to all those commissioners out there, is I don't allow player dumping. Uh, so that is where you're uh, a team that is basically eliminated from the playoffs. There's no chance that you're going to get in. You're just dumping all your good players and having someone pick them up. That's really not fair to anyone else. So I, I do my best to try to avoid that situation. Um, I've yet, knock on wood and pray to the Lord, um, have not been put in a position by my league mates. So thank you to all those guys who don't put me in that position to make those decisions 
to have to reverse uh, acquisitions. So, uh, but yeah, so Juju Smith Schuster, somebody to monitor. Uh, he's going to be out multiple weeks. And then we talked about this a uh, little bit earlier. Mike Evans could land on IR with a hamstring strain. Um, now, it's not a old hamstring. It's just a strain on his right hamstring. Uh, so this is going to be something to monitor with Chris Godwin already out for the year with a dislocated ankle. Uh, he's going to need season ending. Yes. Season ending uh, ankle surgery to correct this. Uh, he was absolutely going on a record pace for, uh, for wide receivers with the bucks. He's been doing phenomenal this year. I think he's at least top five in fantasy. So if you are looking for somebody who is going to definitely need help in the wide receiver area, go look at the guy who has Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and go make your offer on somebody that you may have been targeting. Uh, again, if you need help with trade uh, packages, I am definitely the one to talk to down below. After you subscribe, like, share, and smash the notification button, Leave me a comment and let me know what your trade acquisitions look like and if you need help putting something together to make them say yes. That is the the, the one thing that you want to hear in a trade is, sure, I'll do that, no problem, and getting people to that point. Um, Zay Flowers, uh, wide receiver for the Ravens, he has a right medial high ankle sprain it's a situation to monitor. So keep an eye on this. There's no IR talk. Uh, there's no um, missing multiple week talk. So this could just be a one week type deal. Now, the good thing for the Ravens is that they don't really rely on the pass that much. But somebody to keep in mind is Rashad Bateman. So if you have Bateman on your uh, waiver wire, go pick him up. Um Look, it looks like the Ravens are starting to turn a corner and letting Lamar throw a little more. Uh, like I said earlier, Mark Andrews, he got two scores through the air. Um, Zay Flowers has been a massive target for Lamar. So if he's gone, then that automatically shifts to Rashad Bateman and Mark Andrews. Uh, it also could shift to Isaiah Likely. So... Look, likely, last time I checked, is still out snapping uh, and out route running Mark Andrews. So it's kind of a coin flip on that, but sometimes a coin flip is better than no flip at all. You know what I mean? A uh, couple additional notes. Uh, we, we touched on CMC. Uh, Will Levis, uh, he missed the, uh, this past week with an AC joint. Now, here's the thing. This is one of those uh, Devontae Adam hamstring things where we really didn't think it was a hamstring, and apparently his hamstring miraculously uh, healed up as soon as he got traded to the Jets. So I think that Will Levis is an excuse for Mason Rudolph to get some snaps in Tennessee. Um, like I said, the waiver wire is, or the trade deadline for the NFL is coming up. Oh, uh, Will Tennessee make a play for somebody uh, to come in at quarterback? Don't know, but I have heard that D Hop uh, is definitely on the trade block, and they could possibly be shopping him now. With the injuries that they've had in KC, the prime landing spot for DeAndre Hopkins looks like Kansas City uh, now. I'm, I, I don't know how much to put in that because that's what I heard about Amari Cooper. And Cooper just out of the blue went to Buffalo. Um, as I've said before, I traded for uh, Amari, so I'm happy that he's with Josh Allen in Buffalo. Um, but if D-Hop gets to Kansas City, that could be something special. Um, so... That's that's a TBD on that one. Um, we talked about CMC possibly coming back. David Montgomery picked up a minor knee injury on Sunday. Now, he was in and out uh, during the game. He did have a really good fantasy day. Uh, but 
definitely a situation to monitor. If he goes down, Jameer Gibbs automatically goes to top of the list for uh, running backs in fantasy. So if you have Jameer Gibbs, uh, by all means, hold on to him. Uh, don't let him go. Uh, he is definitely the number, the 1A to the 1B in Detroit. Um, Travis Etienne, uh, look, Tang Bigsby absolutely went bonkers uh, in London um, against New England. Now, it was against New England, so, I mean, take that for what it's worth. But uh, Tank Bigsby did really well. I had Dearness Johnson. Uh, he did good. Um, he got me like 10 points. So, hey, double digits for a running back I'm happy with, uh, especially a fill-in. Uh, but Tank Bigsby, over 20 points as a running back. He was one of, I think, like seven uh, running backs that went 20 and above. So something to keep an eye on. Now, this guy, this guy, look at this guy. This guy right here, Cooper Cup. Yes, Cooper Cup should make his debut Thursday night football. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the start sets. <clears throat> when I run down the Thursday night matchup and let you guys know who's playing Sunday night and Monday night, uh, I try to keep you guys uh, abreast of that so you know where to place your players, whether it's in the flex or in their position. Uh, but Cooper Cup should be active. Uh, apparently, well, sorry, he will be active for a debut coming back from injury on Thursday night football. So, <clears throat> Uh, he's going to be playing the Vikings, and that is an absolute glorious matchup for fantasy. Um, you can definitely throw on Minnesota. Uh, so all those Cooper Cup owners who have been waiting and waiting and waiting for him to come off of injury, this is it right here, guys. Cooper Cup back in action. Uh, Puka Nakua is still recovering from uh, PCL. Uh, he remains weeks away. So what does that mean? That means that Cooper Cup is going to be the only show in town. Pepper him, guys. Pepper him with targets, please. Uh, because I'm probably going to be without DK this week. Uh, another guy who is uh, going to be monitored this week is Curtis Samuel. He came up with a shoulder injury against the Titans. Um so this is a situation worth monitoring. Um, definitely keep an eye out uh, <clears throat> for his for his uh, his situation dealing with that shoulder injury. Now, my last um, plug today for my sponsor, guys. If you're in the Louisiana area and you find yourself downtown and you're a little hungry. Go check out Ami's Grocery. Wait a minute. Grocery store. Yes. Go check out Ami's Grocery Store at 603 Jefferson Street inside of Gordon Square. Um, there's a, it's an office building. It's the bottom floor right there, street level. Uh, you'll see Ami's Grocery in the window. He's got local freeze dried candy. This stuff is amazing. I love the ice cream sandwiches. Um, my wonderful production team, um, a.k.a. my wife, um, goes bonkers for these things. Um, and I talked earlier about my egg production. This is who supply or who I supply with eggs. He has local farm fresh eggs from a local provider. Not just that, but he's got over 200 local items from over 50 local vendors Go down there and check him out. The Wagyu beef jerky is absolutely off the chain. Make sure you go down there and check that out. And look, if you're in that area, it's getting late. You had a long day. You don't want uh, you don't want to mess with dinner. He's got prepared meals for you, for the family. Go down there, check him out. Uh, and look, guys, these aren't just like your typical frozen dinners. These are like locally made type thing okay go down there check him out i'm east groceries his name is bradley go say hi to him tell him that neil from faith and football sent you down there and uh 
who knows? He may give you a little discount. I'm nothing guaranteed yet. Uh, we're still working on it. But go down there, 603 Jefferson Street, Lafayette, Louisiana. Check out Ami's Groceries, guys. So uh, we talked a little bit on uh, George Kittle. Um, Kittle is uh, dealing with a with a minor foot sprain. Now we know that somebody that big making those kind of moves needs comfortability in his feet. This is not one of those opportunities where you get comfortable and uncomfortability, as I touched on in the beginning of this episode. This is one of those things where he needs to have comfortability making those cuts. Um, so this is definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, this makes Jawan Jennings and uh, Ricky Pearsall all the more valuable for the Niners. So go down and make sure you check out um, your waiver wire because those guys probably are still on there. And then that looks like about it, guys. Um, now, I encourage you, make sure that your guys are plugged in to some kind of news outlet. No, I didn't pick up another sponsor. Just got a little dry throat. Um, but guys, make sure you're plugged into ESPN, uh, the Fantasy Pros. Um, of course, my favorite podcast to get my fantasy information, uh, the Fantasy Footballers. Check them out. Now, here's the thing. When you go to big productions like that, you're not going to get the same personal attention that you will in a place like this. So listen to those guys. Check me out down the bottom. Leave me a comment and let me know what you're dealing with this week in fantasy football and in life in general. Uh, guys, if you guys have uh, you know things that you're going through, look, I also want to hear about your victories. If you guys won, whether taking my advice or not taking my advice, down below, let me know. Let me know how I'm doing. So um, check it out. Now, I do want to give a shout out. Um, as I've said before, I don't get paid to do this, but this is a small channel. I've got now 70, we went from 71 to 73 subscribers. So I'm excited about that. I'm very, very happy about that. Um, look, guys, we celebrate every single subscriber here. I appreciate y'all individually greatly. Y'all will know what your subscription means to me personally. Um, but the same way that heaven uh, celebrates just one soul being saved and led to Christ, I celebrate you guys subscribing to this channel. So thank you all very much for my, my number 72 and 73 subscribers. Uh, I know that number 73 was my boy, Alex. So uh, Alex, if you're listening and watching, I appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And if you have any kind of questions down below, guys, subscribe, like, share, drop a comment. Let me know how you're doing in fantasy. Let me know how you're rolling this year. Are you struggling? Are you middle of the road? Are you you know, leading the pack? Let me know. And big shout out to my boy, D-Money, my boy Daniel, his number one in Zia Thunderdome League. Guys, I am a proud papa on this one. Um, if y'all have not been with me and not heard, Daniel is a former Golden Plunger Award winner. He has never been that low before. Um, kind of gave him a little advice, coached him up. Uh, he did all the work himself. So I'm very, very pleased that Daniel is doing so well this year. Um I'm still not giving that up without a fight. I'm just letting you know. I, I love you, my boy, but not that much. Okay, so I'm still going to make you fight for it. So he did absolutely phenomenal at the draft. He's been doing absolutely fantastic throughout the season, um, probably because he hadn't traded with me, but you never know. Um, but anyway, so no, big big shout out to my boy, D-Money. Uh, I, I love you, my man, and uh, we will see you guys Next time, remember, we're going over start, sit, and we will touch on some matchups for Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night. Uh, guys, as always, I love you all. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I want you to remember two things. One, football is good. Two, God is greater. Y'all have a blessed week. 
good luck this week and keep an eye out on those weight, those injury uh, updates. And we'll see you next time on Faith in Football. Take care.